Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about all the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone. That penguin up there, that's one Jill Bryant, and not be confused with the other plushy penguins in the background. I mean, it's kind of an infestation in that area. Bye. Yeah. Um, Pedro Mateus. Hey, man. Hello. You're joining yeah. us. Along with everyone at home, doing it live. Yes. It's kind of brilliant. What's up, everyone? Everyone's been kind of busy running around, except for Pedro. Pedro's like, yeah, oh, whatever. I'm on an island. Deal with it. Oh. <laughs> that, that's cool, man. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So... <laughs> Go ahead, Pedro. I, I want you to ask me how long it took to figure out what was causing our X run issues. How long it took me to figure out that it was one of our fiber optic cards overheating in this studio. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, you did mention that it was like uh, after 45, 50 minutes. So, mm -hmm. how long did it take in the end? <laughs> well, ultimately, not last, we were we really seeing the issue with um, X runs because we do a bunch of our audio stuff routing over the network, and that handles like the big pipe coming into the main box. It we were seeing it like, oh, I really got to take a look at this. And like week before that, I was like, oh, look, something right at the end of this show because you know we do uh, a show on Saturday. You might have seen it, Linux Gamecast Weekly, but we record segments for that, so there's always a cool down time where it's not being pushed. So it was ultimately a week and a half, but I mean, it took me three solid days of intermittent problem that only shows up after 45 minutes. Like, question mark, I don't know, what is this? And we, I finally tracked it down, finally. I think, I think. And we're kind of in limp mode for today. Also, I wanted to throw, uh, I picked up that HD 6350, the AMD card to put in Jackbox, which is ultimately a headless box, but I needed something to stick a monitor into just in case it got to that point. That thing, um, it works 40% of the time on boot because there's apparently a known issue with it where it just nopes on boot and you just get a, it's like you, you got to hit the go again button and it comes up and it's like, womp, womp. Should have listened to Strider, but Strider didn't say anything until after I bought it. I, I don't know how I'll ever recover my $9 investment. I have the sads. <laughs> so I did. My, my adventure in Team Red, everyone. I'm I quadro four K coming Friday, so I'm, I'm back on Team Green. Uh, <laughs> Jill, go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. So the big news here is Jordan arrived Sunday and Empty arrived Monday, and we've been having a great time with the LGC boys. <laughs> so, but I miss I miss not having Vin and Pedro. So. But we have half the crew here, which is really awesome, for Scale 18X, which starts tomorrow. What is and Scale? I've you... never heard of it. <laughs> the Southern California <laughs> Linux Expo. And I think oh that's boy. an important thing to say because people are like, man, why do they keep talking about this fish convention? I mean, what's yeah. this? <laughs> <laughs> Very good, man. Do they Very resize good. things in there a lot? It's, what's the scale? <laughs> or they oh, could, they yeah. could think it'd be like a, for the skateleys, right? Because I found out that's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Thanks, Internet. <laughs> Not hating. Well, it's, it's the lizard know. people, yeah. they're coming and they're it's, hot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, what's what's awesome is I'm going to be doing interviews on the floor once again for LWW. We're going to be going live um, on Linux Gamecast Weekly on Saturday. And I'll be running the Linux Chicks LA booth as well. And Matthew will be there at the Luters booth. <laughs> and we have tons of patrons coming out. We have, uh, oh gosh, Mir and... Um, What's that guy's name? What's that guy's name? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we have a, a mirror and empty and jelly bean <laughs> and atomic. <laughs> I, listen, man, I don't know if it's a joke or senility at this point. So yeah, and, <laughs> yes, I know. I, I was forgetting at, I, atomic's name because I can't say the full name on the show. So, Ranko. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And of course, Alan, uh, Mr. Alert. And yeah, for all those uh, all of you out there who would like to go and get 50% off, just use the Linux Chicks LA promo code CHIX during registration and you'll get 50% off. Yeah. It's really awesome. <laughs> Come show up last minute and get weighed at the scale convention. I, yes. I stole yes. that from you, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, let's <laughs> jump into it, but we're going to start a little bit differently. Um, with an eBay. Oh, are we bringing back the PSAs? E eBay listing, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every, every now and then, I, I like to occasionally do some good. So why are we looking at an Intel 350T4 Ethernet server adapter gigabit RJ45 PCI Express OEM 4 port? Mm. We see that 2,329 of these have been sold, and I was in the market yesterday to pick one of these up. I was looking at it, and I really couldn't, you know, because there's plenty of uh, 350T4s floating around. It's a quad port, PCIe Express 2.0, and, you know, I've dealt with these things for years in Enterprise IT. I have hundreds of them, and I couldn't figure out. This is like something looked wrong. I mean, I see the Intel logo. That's there. Um, you see those um, two little chips there that say Delta on them, right? Those are the Transformers, mm -hmm. and then mine. All of my days, I've never seen Delta silk screened on the chip. Mm, and it yeah. bugged me. And these things aren't, that's what I would expect to pay $52.95 for something that had been pulled working. Yeah, mm, if genuine. you get one of these, you're just not gonna, the only people that I know that reliably make them new would be like 3G tech, and they're going to be like 100 bucks. And we're not going to spend that. But I, I asked Google, and turns out, well, well, welcome to the real world. This is from 2015. Counterfeit network cards <laughs> are a thing, which maybe you knew this, and you're like, well, about time you figured that out, Then uh -huh. I didn't. And yeah, there it is. There's the wow. original. You can't really see, but on the left side, the Delta logo is embossed. Yeah, and if you scroll down, mm. there's a picture of uh, the detail. You can also see the and difference the in the quality of the heat sink. Fake one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> so these are knockoffs. And to be perfectly honest, they probably work just fine. And you're not going to have an issue with them. You know, I, I'm not Nick shaming anyone. So <laughs> just buyer beware, because these are definitely made with cheaper quality components. And yeah. Yeah. if you're doing something that is remotely mission critical, that we have exactly 10 whole milliseconds to monkey around with and timing in the studio with our audio stuff that, yeah, except no substitute. Keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's my good deed. Deal with it. Ta -da. Yay. <laughs> so let's talk about One. the linux -y stuff. Billion. One billion. <laughs> Let's encrypt has issued a billion certificates. Yay. February awesome. 27th, 2020. We're going to use this big round number as an opportunity to reflect on what has changed us, man. You changed everything, Let's Encrypt. Yeah. You did. And the big thing <laughs> mm -hmm. that's really important to me that you changed is me having to cut a check for that Komodo certificate every year. That thing hurt. That was a racket now when you go back and think about it. You're like, what's mm -hmm. the cert going to cost me? 200 bucks? That's not too bad. And <laughs> yeah, now you just get them for free. You're like, here, how many do you want? Like, here, take another one. Take another one. <laughs> Let's Encrypt changed the game yeah. on that, man. Oh, yeah. 100%. Oh. <laughs> I'm really happy about that. And I'm not going to miss it. I, I say good on them. Julie, you got some thoughts on that, though. Yeah. I think it's amazing that 81% of page loads globally and 91% in the US are using Let's Encrypt. That is amazing. And these are really good numbers. And doesn't surprise me as a, you know, I've noticed more sites using HTTPS, especially in the last few years. I mean, more sites, do you? I, I, yeah. Everything warns you if you don't hit something, if it's not encrypted. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Even your browser now starts screaming. It's yeah, like, now it's going everywhere. <laughs> how about, how, have, you, have you experienced this? You know the site's legit. It's not some sketchy site. They just don't have HTTPS. And sometimes Chrome's is like, no. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And what's what's also awesome is they they survive on contributions from the community and businesses and um are are dependent on them so they can keep making the web even more secure. So I actually have donated to them in the past. Mm. And we need to, yeah, we need a yeah, hundred percent of websites with Let's Encrypt. <laughs> if you have awesome. a little bit of cash to spare and say you don't want to uh, fund a certain Linux podcast um, platform, let's mm -hmm. call ourselves that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, the people behind Let's Encrypt are absolutely the ones you should be looking at, and yeah, the gone are the days that um, 
you have a valid excuse for not having a mm-hmm. SSL certificate because yeah, <laughs> not everyone can afford an SSL certificate, especially not you know <laughs> two hundred dollars a year. Low but, ball, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you nowadays, do, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. And if you don't even want to bother setting, man, just go. Cloudflare has a free service. I think that they even include yeah. an SSL cert in that. And yeah. the, um, if you are using Let's Encrypt, they even have a little script that you can cron, mm-hmm. so it'll automatically renew it. There. Done. It, <laughs> it is. I, I was like, oh, look at this magic. I, I was playing around <laughs> setting up a Jitsi box mm-hmm. for testing, and that was just built in. It's like, oh, would you like to auto? Sure. Let's yes, watch. You. <laughs> That's it. Doop, doop, doop. Done. I was like, huh. All right. <laughs> yeah, no. No more excuses. Mm. Get encrypting. <laughs> I guess you could say setting getting a SSL cert these days is a snap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but some snaps are gone, Ben. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out that the snap-based GNOME calculator on Ubuntu was running a bit slow. So the native one will be uh, the default install now with the upcoming April release of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, Focal Fossa. So, and, and this, you know, it makes sense. There were, there were issues with speed and I heard a lot of people complaining about that. Um, but what's interesting is they're also planning the, the Ubuntu software store for that will release will be a snapped based version, <laughs> which is Because that wasn't slow enough already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good point, Pedro. <laughs> so, so yeah, but you still can go, go back and install the default Ubuntu store. And apparently there, if, if you don't, you need to install the default one to make flat packs work correctly. So that's a thing too. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what I was, uh, one of the big things I'm looking forward to in this release, we're going to talk about it more, of course, in the future on LWW, but there will be multi-monitor support in GDM. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been an issue for me because when you would uh, log out to GB, uh, GDM and um, go back into your desktop, sometimes the, the monitor configuration would be messed up. And uh, this solves that. But let me tell you about our Lord and Savior Light DM, which does not have that problem. Yes. yes. <laughs> Get yes. rid of GDM. Yeah. <laughs> true, true that. <laughs> oh, I mean, Light DM's got its own issues, but that's not one of them, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> snaps, I, I, I've said my piece on snaps. I think the technology behind it's interesting. I don't see its place on the desktop, um, server side. Mm-hmm. I get it, but yeah, the calculator and what was it? GNOME Network uh, system yeah. monitor were the two things mm-hmm. that I was opening on a thread ripper with an NVMe drive. Going click, like wait, wait <laughs> boom, like what? Because you, Pedro, am I wrong? When it takes more than. Yeah, no, cycles. if you hit the <laughs> key combo to show the system monitor, you're not expecting it to take two seconds to load. <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting. Well, good on them. Um, getting all that sorted, but is yeah, they? but mm-hmm. it's mostly from the uh, minimal install that they're getting rid of all, all these packages. And okay, mm-hmm. since we're on the t- topic okay. of minimal installs, could we have um, <laughs> G Debbie? back because yes. yes like jill was mentioning <laughs> the new version of the um ubuntu software center is going to be snap based so let's say you get a deb file and you want to install it you click on it and it takes three seconds to load that deb file and then another three seconds for whatever you mm-hmm. the ubuntu software mm-hmm. center is doing Did, let me just have g debbie it, it does be- one thing Please. and it does it well Yes, I use that on all my on all my distros, all my Ubuntu. This Debian. is what I don't get though, because I can't be alone. I don't think I've ever opened a software center on any distribution ever. If I've mm-hmm. anything I've ever installed, and this is not trying to get street cred or anything, is my first instinct yeah. is to open a VT. Yeah, and apt to get. Yeah. <laughs> It's app these days. Come on, give it the time. It's just yes. app, yeah. Oh, uh, I, but I you still can... use app to get. 
<laughs> you got to be more efficient. Uh, I do use um, Synaptic if I'm using yeah. a uh, Ubuntu Debian based operating system. Uh, yeah. Synaptic, just because I like the search option and it mm -hmm. uh, searches contextually as well. So it actually usually finds the package I'm looking for. Now, I'll so, back you up yeah. on that. Synaptic, yeah. Synaptic's Synaptic Bay. Oh, I just made yeah. someone cringe. Uh, oh, no. Um, <laughs> Synap it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing when I'm searching for stuff. Yes, you nailed it. Yes. Right there. Yes. That, yeah. That's like, boom, so show true, me something Pedro. related. Sort by installed. Maybe I can track it down. That's great. Well, good on them. But that's not the only Ubuntu news we have this week. No. Yeah. <laughs> so Ubuntu Kylin uh, has a new user interface. And um, the team is in the process of revamping their user interface, user interface, excuse me, with lots of eye candy, <laughs> the look of Windows 10, and it's in QT. Yay. Yeah, it just, it looks really, really beautiful. And I'm, I can't wait to test it out. And it's even got, oh gosh, drag and drop virtual desktop panel, which is if really nice to use. If someone handed me a computer use. and it had this goo on it, I would punch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I mean, beautiful. it looks very Windowsy. It looks like Windows yeah. 10. I mean, it, it, it's got the all the aesthetics of a microwave trout. Yeah. Well, to me, it's really refreshing to see the Chinese, you know, the that the Chinese Linux distros are so focused on the desktop user interface and user experience. Because again, with all the sanctions with Microsoft over in that country, it just kind of makes sense that they're really trying to do a lot of polish on on the Linux uh, desktop side. See, one of the biggest issues is when you start cloning UIs is people expect it to work like Windows 10. Yes. And that <laughs> makes people angry when it doesn't. <laughs> it can, yes, Ben. <laughs> it can. <laughs> this is just the, uh, that's the real talk people don't like to have about. And it's like, well, it looks just like, but does it function exactly like it? Well, no, that's yeah. going to confuse people. Yes. Well, <laughs> but I will China. give... Yeah, I will back mm -hmm. Jill uh, and the yeah Chinese distros. They always nail like the visual presentation, and they're very aesthetically pleasing. They are the, mm -hmm. that's a really freaking nice looking UI, uh, yeah. both uh, for Ubuntu chillin or killin Kylin, however you want to say it. Chillin, um, oh, chillin, uh, chillin. Yeah, it's um, and deepen. Uh, Yes. Those are the two big ones. You have Deepin for GTK and now uh, Chillin for um, QT. That mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That looks pretty good. I would very much like the option of having that um, UI without having to install Chillin. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just really polished. I'm not hating on it at all. I, I, this is more like I'm looking at that with the same genuine... Like just confusion that I have when I see Windows 10. Like, oh, what is this? And I remember trying to use Windows, Windows 8 even, and 10. Like, I couldn't use this. It, it, it genuinely made me angry. Like, ah, why don't you work like I mean, the old Windows? that's the default layout, but uh, yeah. yeah, you can just move the panel up to the top and uh, make the menu work as it would in a regular distro instead of that full screen. Right on. No, it's Operation. completely 100%. It's absolutely <laughs> cool if that's your jam, man. And it's good that it's there because Linux is about options, people. Yes. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I saw a video maybe I did a couple of weeks ago where I rescued uh, a Mackie control surface. It was like, oh, buddy, no, you're not going to go to the pound. I'm going to save you. And it's in purgatory right now. But the reason I get that <laughs> is. Because with Mackie control, you can do some things with like MIDI control surfaces in Mackie mode that you just can't do with MIDI CC, which is like a learn mode. It's like a one put and push thing. But with Mackie, it has the equivalent of like, uh, think about it this way. With MIDI, you can do like a key at a time, some keys. With Mackie, you do mm -hmm. like control, alt, Z, butterfly. And there's nothing in between with that, especially with like Audor and your DAWs and stuff like that. So say you wanted to like map a macro in MIDI learn mode. You couldn't do it until now. This is, how do we do this? Mid, mid, 
Midi dings. Too many D's in that, man. <laughs> Midi dings. Dings. <laughs> this is a beautiful little script. Uh, the guy <laughs> was missing the functionality that I was describing. He was like, you know what? I'm going to add it myself. Um, it enables you some MIDI controls and modify your keys to alter the behavior of other controls like shift, control, alt, butterfly. I might have threw that in on a computer keyboard. <laughs> and you can use this with a uh, DAW or in live performances. You might remember I was talking about like one of the functions that I needed in the Mackie mode was I need to be able to do plugins. It's like, no, you can't do that. Well, in generic MIDI CC, I can't do these function keys, but no, I can. And it's pretty easy to set up. I've been busy tracking down overheating fiber optic cards this week, so I didn't need a chance to play with it. But I am excited. Hey, look, it's Python. That's great. Everything's in Python these days. Um, the in inspiration for the script <laughs> came from uh, reading about direct link in the owner's manual for an Audio Oxygen 49 V3 controller, where it only worked with, you know, I had some cool stuff that it only did with that DAW. And he's like, I can make this myself. And he did. You plug it into Jack. You one side in, one side out. If you're familiar with the actual setup matrix program, once you need it to do and assign the keys, it's relatively straightforward. I hope Paul's aware of this. Put this in Audor 6. Just mm. remove that extra step. So that way I can just get crazy with the cheese whiz. Very happy to see awesome. that. But um, what else? Oh, we should have had this after the Ubuntu. Cause yeah. <laughs> it's meant. It's meant. And Wait, they have some monthly news. news. Yeah, just yes. February 2020 business. This is looking that pink is the new black. Hey, man, everything's better in pink. Uh, <laughs> but it's like that, that warpinator because, it's like, oh, I remember the thing. It's like, what's this about? Well, they've uh, set. Do you remember what was it called? Uh, Giver. Yeah. Yes. yes. That was something mm -hmm. that used to be included in men out of the box. Other distros too back in the day. It was this all the way to like boop a file over your network, point A to point B. And, you know, the critters it meant they liked it so much and it, you know it went away it was no longer developed or maintained and like okay well we're not going to include it enter warpinator so th this awesome. is kind of like a spiritual successor to um you know, from way back in the day and the idea is just to recreate the core functionality offered by that application and they do point out that you know warpinator is a temporary name well, I might suggest a total legit copy of Superman.wtf <laughs> on the blog. Superman-returns.mkv. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you might want to edit that. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't use that name. <laughs> that sounds more like you're you're moving the, uh, doing uh, visual magic on the desktop. <laughs> I'm just saying, you like might not want to have that cube. screenshot with the Superman Returns dot MKV. No, 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 that, that's, that's bait if I ever saw it. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. please true. don't. <laughs> okay, that's the, yeah. Uh, yeah, give her what's the thing, and hey man, this is back, could play with Mint, they do have the, uh, there's a Git repo with everything, if you want to go try it yourself, on the distribution, yep. so that's cool, mm -hmm. I'm happy with it. Yay. And I guess that uh, just about uh, gets us ready to build a new PC, maybe nope. to try Yay. that new version of Mint. I am tired of this mindless consumerism, Pedro. We'll no longer build <laughs> Okay, fine. Maybe I'll just take a look. Really? <laughs> I just a pee. Well, uh, if you're not done with consumerism uh, and you're looking for some deals... Well, uh, LabGopher extracts information from eBay listings to help you easily find the hardware for your needs. Basically, if you want a complete system or just a part of a system, you can just look it up on um, LabGopher, and it gives you the ability to sort a bunch of different listings by price, and it does so in a much, much smaller uh, space than the actual official uh, eBay search function does. Mm -hmm. And um, down the side there, you see that you have Lab Gopher US and Lab Gopher UK, Oof. Canada and Australia. The UK version uh, includes both uh, eBay UK and the uh, European version. So you can get your uh, British pounds up and running to get you that bit of soft, uh, in this case, hardware that you've been looking for with the help of Lab Gopher. 
Yeah. And it's right across that, and it looked kind of neat, so I just thought I'd throw it in there, and it might help you build your next Linux server, so it's still technically counts and gets to be on the show yeah. because of it. <laughs> yeah. Or if, makes... say, you're looking for a uh, mm. graphics card on the cheap. Yes, yes. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I just recently used it for that because <laughs> I was looking at some new AMD cards. And this makes sense because it turns out that computer hardware is one of the most sold items on eBay. So yep. th this makes sense. And it's so nice and compact and easy to use. Works really well. Yeah, no, it, it lets mm -hmm. you sort by everything. It's like, okay, I don't yeah. want to pay $50 in shipping. To show me something cheaper. Cheaper, yeah. No, I want to watch the item and never buy it like a real eBayer. Yeah. And I like that it includes that's CPU Passmark. <laughs> that, that's really awesome. <laughs> that's neat. Um, all this will be in our show notes. Go check that out if you are interested, or maybe uh, you just want to type in Lab Gopher. Just be careful. Make sure you put a .com on that. Okay? Yeah. Trust me on that. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so something and we do... I suppose it's time for that uh, special, special segment oh, where here we, uh, go. we reinforce that Microsoft uh, really loves uh, Linux. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I get to yes. see the booth tomorrow at scale. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be uh, standing right across the aisle from them. Yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, this one, it's, uh, well, it's ATP. It, the um, Advanced Threat Protection, uh, Microsoft's own, it's not an antivirus, it's an enterprise-focused security management tool, one which we happen to use at work. But mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, basically what it does is it lets you... Uh, have uh, active monitoring on all of your um, enterprise um, machines at once. Mm. On Windows machines, this just picks up on whatever Windows Defender is doing and all of the telemetry stuff that Microsoft in inevitably collects. So it's uh, for Windows, it just integrates with that and pulls everything and shows uh, system administrators whatever's going on. Now, mm -hmm. that functionality is also available for Linux machines. So if you have a mixed environment that has both Windows and Linux machines, or Linux servers, far more likely, and you <laughs> want to be able to see what's happening through ATP, which may or may not introduce some issues in the future, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, you can do that now. It's uh, it's available. It's a preview right now. Uh, it's not like a fully released thing. So uh, don't deploy it in production or do. Let us know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, this really makes sense because now that Microsoft, as we've talked about here on LWW many times, is becoming a software as a service company. You know, this makes sense, especially since they run Linux for just about everything now, including Azure, and 50% of the company is really Linux right now. <laughs> so this this makes sense. <laughs> I kind of like a little bit of the delicious irony. It's like, oh, yeah, do you, do you get a lot of Microsoft software running in your system? Yeah, it's like, oh, you're going to need to keep track of it, right? Like, yeah. It's like, wouldn't you like to run that on something a little more stable than Windows? <laughs> I was like, yeah. sure. Microsoft's yes. like, we, we can sell you both of them. Check it out. Complete turnkey <laughs> yeah. solution. The buggy software and this software to keep track of it. Mm. Mm -hmm. All running on Linux. That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> kind of brilliant. Like the beautiful people who make this show possible. I'm talking about our patrons. The, our bosses. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> Keeping us loud, live, independent. All that fun jazz. No commercials, ad free. Plus, they get the name and the credits and a gang of rewards that you can get by becoming a patron. Little bonuses that, you know, we'll like throw them in yeah. there, man. Like access to our show notes. Uh, you can be a sea monster. That's the thing. Discord, come hang out with us the other six days of the week and up to including executive producing levels. And there's even one level I don't even think anybody's ever claimed. But you have to go check that out for yourself, <laughs> man. Um, RSVP for our game streams. And you get early picks at some of the stuff I'm working on, um, interfacing Linux, uh, spitballing show ideas and stuff like that. Plus, if you want to hang out in our production meeting every Saturday, an hour before we go live in Discord, hop in the audio channel, give us some feedback. And... Uh, <laughs> Listen to us mm -hmm. talk about movies because we end up doing that a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> movies, TV shows, 
maybe the game we played for that week's um, chair acquisition. Yeah. Physics. Um, we, <laughs> yeah. we get off on some weird tangents. That'll also be available as a uh, podcast, too. You'll get a little custom RSS stream. But thank you, all of you who are hanging out, yeah. doing that, awesome. making it a thing. Uh, also, <laughs> put our faces on your body. Yes, <laughs> you can do that by... <laughs> Heading over to store.linuxemcast.com, we have t-shirts and more t-shirts and long t-shirts and cups that you can wear as t-shirts. You'll just need some tape and stickers to cover your bits that you should have, um, in case you don't like wearing t-shirts. <laughs> and yes, cover shirts. yourself in stickers. <laughs> cover yourself in stickers, man. They're probably not toxic, but you know what? We can make that part of a study. So it'll be self-reported. Just cover yourself and we'll yes. figure out the toxicity level of the um, adhesive used in LGC stickers. All we ask for is some video. <laughs> Just start the camera yeah. before you start gluing the stickers, okay? <laughs> and if it's not, make sure it's only you that you put them on. I don't, I don't no videos of unwilling participants. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That'll be the thing. Um, I did create a new thing. Because we don't use things correctly. If you're curious about anything that's in the studio, uh, just go to linkscamecast.com, the about section, studio equipment, and that's all the stuff that we're using um, hardware wise. But uh, we do have a wish list. Uh, Pedro's got one, Jill's got one, mm -hmm. Jordan's got one. That's like, oh, I want stuff. Yeah. Uh, we have one for the <laughs> studio that I don't really use as a wish list. So if you're just curious about stuff that I'm planning on buying anyway and you just want to come creep on that, you can do that. Uh, and I did set up a different one for. It's boring stuff. You probably, you're not interested. It's like tables and stuff like that, right? <laughs> but I set up one for interfacing Linux that if you've watched the first episode of that, of stuff that I'm going to be picking up to test. So you can get an idea of what's coming down the line, just to satisfy that curiosity. I might be trying to take care of emails that haven't happened yet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Yay. let's get in. Oh my. scientifically accurate. Ooh. That looks like turkey dinner. Slice of pie. <laughs> That's a Da Vinci pie, yes. Yeah. So, um, oh, go ahead. as it turns out, uh, the Raspberry Pi was released mm -hmm. February 29th, 2012. Oh, look at which you. was a <laughs> um, Eight years ago, which, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's kind of. Well, it, it, it's kind of uh, crazy when you think about it. It's like eight years ago. Man, I'm old all of a sudden. <laughs> that makes you feel but, old. Yeah, a little bit. But yeah, the Raspberry Pi, this uh, TD tiny little single board computer that um, started off with very, very humble roots. And they say, like, number one, Raspberry Pi's original target was just 1,000 units. Yes. Uh -huh. I Amazing. think we've blown past the billion units now. When you're thinking about that, they're like, that's a lot of units. But when you're getting stuff made, you know, it's like in China, that's a minimum order. But that's still expensive yeah. for something that you're like, yeah. well, I don't know if anyone's going to buy these. Uh -huh, yeah. When true. they started, it's like, okay, uh, they're based uh, off the UK and they're making a single board computer. Yeah, we've seen those. <laughs> Pedro is such a fan. He moved to Cambridge. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and I work right across the road from um, Arm. But uh, yes. that's n neither here nor there. Uh, there's uh, like a list and they organized Tom's mm -hmm. Hardware, organized eight things you might not know about the uh, Raspberry Pi. And mm -hmm. one of the things I noticed when they announced the Raspberry Pi 4 was that someone found a mention that they would have one gigabyte, two gigabyte, four gigabyte, and eight gigabyte uh, versions for the RAM capacity in the um, the new Raspberry Pi. Is this why they were uh, holding off on the eight gigabyte versions? What? Is, is there going to be like a special eighth birthday um, yeah, <laughs> Raspberry Pi point. edition? Yeah, really good point. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it'll have an NVIDIA chipset built into it, so it'll be 7.5 gigs. It'll be called a... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was going to no. say it was going to be called the Raspberry Jetson. Mm. 970. <laughs> they do bring yeah. up the fact that you can overclock your Pi, which is like, yes. that's cool. Just, just be careful doing that. And if you do, make sure you buy that adorable little tower fan and put it on there and put some LEDs yes. on it and <laughs> be a horrible human being in general. Uh, but yeah, they, they only plan to make one 1,000. That mm -hmm. That's interesting because, again, that's a, just... just Think how many thousands upon thousands and thousands. Like, oops, 
can only be like <laughs> this is a perfect Look example at the Raspberry of like Raspberry Pi Zero W. Yeah. It's yeah. They're selling uh they're selling the uh W version with Wi-Fi for the same five bucks that they're selling the non um one. So it's like oh yeah, that's constantly sold out everywhere yeah. all the time. Everywhere. <laughs> Absolute game changer because before that Arduino, I had a couple of those that I'd play around. Those were just like controllers, man. Like it was like, yeah. oh look, I can make that do a thing. <laughs> Then I got my first Pi, and I'm like, oh, that's neat. I probably gave yeah. it to somebody, and then I bought another one. I was like, oh, that, that's slightly <laughs> more neat, and gave that one away. Aww. Well, another cool thing is the price of the Raspberry Pi has dropped, actually, relative to inflation. It's still $35, but it actually should be $39.80 <laughs> now, despite being 40 times fa faster and much more powerful. And the other cool, yep, there's Pedro. The other cool thing is more than 2 million Raspberry Pi 4Bs have been sold. That is amazing. It's one of the most sold computers in the world. It's the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. That's I so can't neat. believe it's eight years old. It's just, oh, wow. Seems it's like really yesterday. Cheap. But... Uh, it's a great <laughs> teaching tool for if you want to teach someone about a computer. I mean, everything is right there. Mm -hmm. Credit card shape thing. There you go. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's such a fantastic project. I'm glad it's there. And I know there's a billion bio yeah. trips, but there will always be the one that started it all. Yeah. Yep. That's mm -hmm. right. So yes, if you want to tell mm -hmm. us about your pie adventures or misadventures or how you too live next to ARM. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can absolutely tell us all about it and even show us some pictures of your pie projects if you have and them. Your uh, go to Luke's I want arm pictures for next week. <laughs> arm pictures. Yes. <laughs> arm, I want arms on arms. <laughs> yeah, get okay. something like that going. <laughs> that would actually be interesting. But yeah, LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button and uh, make sure you pick LWDW from the little box at the top. And uh, fill out the rest of the form. It's pretty easy. Show us your projects. Show us your arms on arms. Arm on arms. <laughs> <laughs> or you can do what um, JM did and provide um, a little bit of feedback. Uh, feedback. Not about yeah. the show. Yeah, not about the show uh, specifically, but about uh, the venture yeah. results. This is kind of about the show. This yes. is what we use to make the show. Yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pick this out, man. JM's like, yo, mm -hmm. check this out. Resolve on Ubuntu, because apparently this is like one of those rando videos I made maybe like two years ago. That is the number one search. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Period. It, I mean, it has like something like 14 or 20. Th I don't keep track, but it's got a ridiculous amount of views. Yeah. And it's like Ubuntu is unstable. I'm talking about Resolve. Too many missing dependencies. Dude, there's one package you have to install. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one. Zor ISO. That's it. So immediately out of the gate, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> and library files, which are uh -oh. none. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, this is you got to fight back against people that just spread misinformation. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I love the canonical folks, and I love the Fedora folks. I like the Red Hat folks too. But he's like, your projects will get corrupted eventually. There's a reason CentOS and Red Hat were chosen. Uh, See, okay. I like that broad sweeping statement. Yeah, I know. This is the problem with tribalism. All right, first off, yeah. Linux is too small, especially in the desktop side, for this. You, can, you can't cut the pie. We don't need to be trying to pick out, well, my distribution's better than yours. Tribalism, wow. way. Way too small, man. There's not enough of us. We, we need to get rid of that. Make that your 2020 New Year's resolution, okay? <laughs> Second of all, picked the wrong yeah. person. You just did. You just messed yes. up. I mean, um, <laughs> there is oh. a version of CentOS that's like, seven that has been mangled manipulated and twisted and you actually have to have a physical cd burner to install from the fine people at resolve you gotta remember mm -hmm. to know the history of resolve resolve is a turnkey solution mm -hmm. you didn't buy the software you bought the thirty-four thousand dollar control boards with the hardware yes. to run it and the software pre-installed separating that you can download that component which will kind of work but don't recommend it if you try to get it up and running on regular CentOS 7 have fun go to the forums there's an eight page thread that will mm -hmm. get you most of the way there 
um, eight. Well, there's another three pages on top of that if you want to go play with that game. Or you can just run it on a Debian-based system or yes. run it on Fedora. I ran it on Fedora yeah. for six months and didn't have any issues with it. And trust me, I'm making use of it. You know, I have this thing wired up to deck link cards for audio and all the other fun stuff. Not a problem. And we have the full version of it, you know, and give them, give them some coin. Yeah. Haven't had any issues. And then again, make sure you're using NVIDIA. I'm not saying that as an NVIDIA shill. I'm repeating what the people at Resolve said. Make sure you're using NVIDIA. Yeah. Or you're going to have a bad yeah. time. It helps Kuda. a lot. I've actually, yeah. <laughs> um, it runs actually really beautiful for, on Arch. In the, uh, the, the AUR has some uh, download scripts for it. And it actually mm -hmm. runs really well on there. And I was able to get it to run on AMD as well on Arch. So that was cool. <laughs> the yeah, It's not so much as you can get it up and running. Um, yeah, AMD video cards is not a problem, but you're going to be using OpenCL and Resolve OpenCL. from the ground yeah, up it, is built to take advantage of Kuda. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so while well, you can get away with it, I don't recommend it. And you're probably going to run into issues in Fairlight, period. But mm -hmm. there or there, use <laughs> Resolve on anything you want. <laughs> It's great. It's yeah. you, you, Yay. But see, next week, be like, I don't understand why you're using closed source video editors on. Oh, like, Ooh, we can go deeper, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, that thing that has basically kickstarted like a significant uh, adoption of Linux as a desktop operating system and a viable alternative to uh, the current other offerings, mm -hmm. uh, it was a teeny tiny 32-bit proprietary bit of software. Yeah. You may have heard of it. It's called Steam. Nope. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, do they have Steam conventions? Uh, well, there's Steam Punk And it's not boiling water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to get out of here before it gets any worse, all right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's roll them credits. Yay. Yay. Uh. Yay! We love you, our patrons. Thank you to Vin Stone and Pedro Mateus. <laughs> and thank you, Jill. <laughs> Who? Yay! <laughs> Aww. Ben forgot my name. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to our beautiful uh, seriously, producers. Seriously, thank you. All of you. Executive producers. <laughs> and Jay, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, skill. thanks everybody for showing up. We'll see you again next week. 212. Yeah. It's got to be 213. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a palindrome, sort of. Thanks, Brad. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>